Team Liquids turn to ban. <laughs> Team Empires turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. And we're back. <laughs> Any second now. <laughs> Any moment now. Seems some of the issues may be piece related, guys. We're hopefully going to get stuff sorted out. Production is currently. There we go. We're good. Hitting the fritz. It may take us while getting the we're drop. We're back. We're back. We're going to click the drop button now, and hopefully by the time we finish our intro, we'll be in oh. the drop. Okay, never mind. There we go. We don't need our camera time. This time we're not missing the drop though, so that's good news. Yeah. Game four. Tuskar band again. There we go. Yeah. Back, to, back to the norm. Shadow Fiend co-op in the pool. Let's see who goes for which. Let's Ooh. see if Shadow Fiend's left alone again. Like, it's, if he's just not picked this time. I mean, time. Empire may pick Seconds neither and take whichever is left, I guess. Yeah. Is always the option they have if they feel there's like a, a winter, winter wyvern. Winter wyvern yeah. When they had... You go back to game two, but... No. Decide they really want the co-op. General played it pretty damn well. Why not? I don't know if Liquid really won the SF as well, is the other thing. I feel like if they left both, Liquid would take the co-op and Empire would be like, well... I got a hero they're comfortable with. Wyvern SF is there, Dazzle SF. Yeah, I guess yeah. they just went for Wyvern SF. It's just team giant team fight potential. Good Empire look to snag up with their Queen of Pain second pick. Very much like it's always interesting, like BO5's longest series, you see like the picks and metagames adjust game to game. Yep. Very few teams radically change their pick going from like a game one to a game two. The old team DK used to do it sometimes. Secret maybe do it a Secret and Vici, probably two teams who can change their play styles a lot, but these kind of teams, it's like set in Team stone. Empire These are the picks we want to play. Wow. That Early... may be a slight surprise, though. So. Early Furion. Yeah. I mean, then we know Empire want to play it and are comfortable with it. We saw that in the game they won, but... Yep, same first, same first heroes kind of that they had. Queen of Pain with Furion versus the Shadow Fiend. The score is 2-1, I'm being told. Empire Update is 2-1 to, to Team Liquid right now. If they win this game, they will be coming to LA. For the land finals, Empire looking to force a game five. Slada, we not we saw one game of Slada. It was game one where Empire had it. Been a huge success here this series, and not something teams are first picking, unlike in some of the other events that we're we're having around. Yeah, it really feels emphasis has been mid lane, all about the mid lane. Definitely between these two teams, it appears to be that way. But it does look like Empire is focusing their bans on my control. Remaining. All four so far. Off lane <laughs> yeah. bands, it seems. <laughs> One hero who has. I, mean, I don't even say he's got a limited hero pool, but you can. I feel like if you target like one ban onto each different role, so, I mean, each player has at least like three to four heroes they're really comfortable, so it's like a good approach to throw all your bands onto one player. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you if you're picking your, you know, Furion's probably the off laner here. If you're picking your off laner in the first two, you might as well just get rid of the other ones. Yeah. So as far as you know, maybe we see the Night Stalker, that seems to have completely dissipated and fallen off. Make a resurgence. Mm. It's good versus the Co-op, good versus the Furion, and it's good with the uh, SF and Wyvern. Undying also is still a possibility, which I feel used to be a big mind control hero for a while. Um, post nerf 6.85, it seems less so, but I mean that's just a liquid hero as well. Like they they play it on Kuro as well. It's not just mind control who can run the Undying. Really worried about these hard carries. Yeah, worried about that global with this yeah. Furion as well, just late game. And Liquid don't play fast tempo. Even though last game they went for like a fairly fast push, it was very kind of slow pace. Yeah. Like, you could read every single movement before it came. It was never like running at you, quick Dota. So that's where heroes like Spectre and AM. Like, as far as teams to pick hard carries against, Liquid's probably one of the better teams to go for the more greedy hard carries. Yeah, and the, both, like all these teams, both these teams so far and like yesterday as well watching, they don't really have too many, too much lockdown. Liquid decides, you know what? We're just gonna grab the shaker. We're versus the Quap. It seems like it keeps becoming a recurring issue, or not enough to pick these guys off. And pretty good against Profit too. Like if yep. you do end up in the late game setting, which we're seeing happen, you've got some solo pickoff potential from a shaker. So we'll see what the cores are gonna be. We don't really know Silent or Matumba Man's heroes just yet. Could be a Silent Queen of Pain. He's actually played a decent amount, but yep. leaves it a bit open. It doesn't really strike me as any big mid laners for 
for general, unless you play something like a Wind Ranger here. Yeah, yeah. with Furion, it's always good. Shaker though. No more gyrocopter though. Is we'll that? <laughs> you I don't, don't think we'll you, see it. You don't want to see more gyrocopter. I don't think we will. Though they're probably just like I had like incredible farm. I had everything I needed, and then I just die once, and I'm yeah. useless. You know, I just get completely set back. If I get gone on instead of being the one initiating the aggression, become useless. Very that was quickly. against Winter Wyvern and stuff too. Like yeah, gyro is normally seen as like a hero where you get cold embrace. Well, gyro can just run up you and rocket barrage to do a ton of damage and secure the kill. Yeah. I mean, you look at, like, Wyvern ES, these are heroes Jiro normally does fine against, but it just feels like no longer a relevant pick. The first AA, this is something I feel should have been the fourth pick from Team Empire last game, not yeah, the Gyrocopter. I agree. If they'd picked AA, that could have been a very different game. And they may have still got the Jiro as their fifth, so it would have been a more well-put-together draft. Yeah, solidifies the lanes, global potential, everything about the heroes, just... Just, you know, they lack a little bit of chase and lockdown, but co-op with Blink and all that, yeah. pretty useful. And you've got to imagine that their last couple of picks are going to be the, like, pull it together with some lockdown, some initiation as well. Five seconds Maybe some, like, Silent Wraith King coming out again. It's been a while, but he does oh, love yeah. that hero. Reserve time. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, we'll see what Liquid look to grab for themselves. They may need mind controls here for the offlane, depending on how the Earthshaker is going to be ran. As well as looking for the safe lane farmer for Matumba Man. Juggernaut. Juggernaut, there it is. Okay. Empire's turn to pick. Something a little bit more fast tempo, but... When... Oh, okay, well there's your standard there we lockdown. And we talked about they need some control, they need the initiation. It's going to come in the form of what I doubt is a support. This is likely for Silent. Armor going to be... The Warcry is one of those really big underrated spells against the SF as well as Juggernaut as well. Just in general as well for pushing anything. Just yeah. It's an incredibly good spell. Low cooldown, has high uptime once it's maxed out. It's a strong pick and it's... I think sometimes not not picked as much as you'd hope for it to be picked because his laning stage is quite weak. He doesn't have the mana pool to use multiple stuns, but there's no offlaners that can really pressure the Sven this game. You've got to... If it's Earthshaker, it's the easiest lane in the world. Yeah. And Mangos do help, you know, the new Mango change. You can have you can have like one or two stuns in the lane. And most people seem to be going for either one or two levels max in the stun, and then they go for this max cleave, lifesteal, go to the jungle, give yeah. your, you know, give your support the lane. It's maximum efficiency. Okay. We'll see what but his last pick will be. No Rubik AA duo. I'm glad to see Jug kind of coming back. He, he like he got a few nerfs and then he got like a decent buff on his Blade Fury and now he's people are starting to be like, you know what, Jug's still a good hero. He's one of those heroes, your supports can just well, ditch him and he gets left in the lane and he's pretty self-sustaining. The recent patch he got a buff to his Blade Fury, didn't he? Yeah, the, that's what I meant, yeah. yeah. It's actually, like, I mean, people talk about like Rocket Barrage damage and all that. And you look at Blade Fury, at level 4 it does 750 magic damage yeah on a really short cooldown like 18 seconds sounds like a lot but five seconds of that is uptime so it's not just like you use it and then you've got to wait 18 seconds it's 13 seconds, seconds of downtime remaining. so if you're ridiculously good when you come online yeah there's five no i don't remaining. really see the point in not getting it. i know a lot of people are doing like the stats type build and all even that after the, farm, the at, but... at, at first after the change there was a lot of that but I, yeah now it looks like people are starting to realize, you know, Blade Fury, this is like an early aggression hero. You get like one item, you can go you can go kill anybody basically as soon as you hit level seven, level eight, level six, certain timings. Both teams looking for their last Well, no, not both teams. It depends on the Earthshake. It could be an offlane or a support here. It seems Empire expect it to be an offlaner. And the offlane pool is just very limited. And dying hasn't really been a thing here. If anything, I feel Liquid may want more catch against the split push lineup that Empire like to put together around this Prophet. Although this one a bit less split, Sven and Queen of Pain, as opposed to the anti mage. Ten seconds remaining. So we'll see. What Liquid have in mind here. Five, Five seconds, seconds left. Lina. Team Empire's turn to pick. So. Or Lena, probably. This, I mean, this is kind of a Jarex hero, although he's also the Wyvern player, so... Kuro, 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 Kuro Lina, yeah. from time to time, yeah. Good hero. Lots of disable. The disable that they need now. Burst through with BKBs if he ends up, if that guy ever gets an Ags, of course, on the Lena. Good versus Fen. Pretty good against this, this general split push as well, if you can farm up the, the Yule Ten Scepter. Seconds. Yeah, they're likely to put more farm priority on Lena than the Wyvern in this game. Five so Empire's last remaining. pick now coming out. Last grab support. 
Yeah, they're gonna do some. Uh, gonna gonna be. Change the lanes up around. They're gonna do some crazy stuff. Or Shaker one v wanting a profit. Jungle profit. <laughs> spin off lane. Universe style. <laughs> AA solo mid support co-op. It happened. Yolo. <laughs> With the last pick, faceless void. Quop supporting a faceless void in the safe lane. <laughs> oh god. I don't uh, think you could I don't think you could find like a more bizarre way to lane this. That, that hero is so quite Maybe the worst in Dota right now, or like bottom three. Maybe. I remember I've, I've, every Seven time seconds, I go through this discussion I'll say a hero I think's like like one of the worst in Dota and then like a week later he's being picked. I say about Seven Death Prophet and then Death Prophet started getting picked, I'm like, man, I look like an idiot now. <laughs> like this hero is actually relevant. Sand King. Greedy support. Okay. I mean, if it's an Earthshaker offlaner, you kind of get away with greedy supports. At least one greedy support. I like it, I like it. Matumba men. The jug. Yep. And the only thing Liquid could maybe do is like an offlane Lena as a core and just have the Earthshaker help out a little bit. I don't know if Mind Control is, would play the, the Lena by any chance. Nah, he's on, he grabs the Earthshaker. Okay. I was thinking maybe they could do something weird like that as well. Just so that the Earthshaker is helping the Shadow Fiend a bit. I think Wyvern will probably just have to take that role. Yep. It is Radiant SF. That was one of the big issues last game where the SF never really caught up was it was on the dire side, so... Yep. Got pressured in the lane horribly and then... Kuro was also just like, not giving any shits. He just yeah. like runs in, well, grabs the SF, throws them into the neutrals. Even when they was farming, he just like ran up there alone into like three or four heroes just yep. to like, figure out what was going on and leech experience, cause problems and just be a menace. I hear the... They're all very solid game. So here we go. Game four. Team Liquid. Nah, not not too out of the ordinary from them. We see the Lena pop up, although a hero that Kuro does play. Flame Shaker, very much a relic of the past, but I mean sometimes you gotta go for those old old school offlaners when everything else gets banned out, so looking at this lineup for Liquid, it doesn't even look like a liquid draft. For the most part, they usually have like no. a healer or like a lich or something like this in the in the midst of their drafts. But this time, it's just the jug and the wyvern, I guess. Yeah, this is they, they haven't got any of their kind of signature heroes. There's no like, I mean, jug something with Tumbleman plays, but it's not like his the Ember or the Slack. Same for Fata, the SF something he plays, but it's not the signature heroes. I feel like it might be just a little bit like. Offsetting in my head, just thinking that I always, I felt like I, oh, I saw, I saw them play like Lich Bane and Razor like seven games in a row. Yeah. So it just looks a little bit different when they pick this more, uh, I guess, standard type draft. For Empire, I'll see how they piece things together. For Empire, it's hard to know really right now what is an Empire draft. They've been cycling through a few different players on their roster, and here we settle with a new promising mid player in general. I feel. Outside of that game three SF, he's been very, very strong. I mean, yep. it's not even like he had a terrible game. He just got camp mid by Dazzle and shut down. Well, camp mid by the Rubik, but yeah. Oh, uh, by Rubik, yeah, sorry. His Dazzle's trying to help just TP it out at level one. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was the end of that lane. All right, so quick balls coming out as the two teams get ready. Now we guess. All right, who's going to TP to the lanes this time? Um, I'll, I'll say Jerax, and we'll get a and, definitely uh, safe lane TP from Liquid, and then I don't profit point TP. So one, there even be a dire TP? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> no TPs. No TP from Jerax. Damn, we lost. Yep, there it is. Jerax almost always does. You know, it's the mind games. You get to game four of a best of five, you're like TP to that safe lane every time. This time we don't need to. We'll save. We'll skimp on seventy five gold yeah. because they're not going to be trying to ward because they're expecting that TP. And chop down some trees here for the uh, the stacks, and that pretty much signals what Jerex is planning on doing. Yeah, I actually, slightly missed a couple of trees here on the left. But... Yeah, he was just a little bit too far to the right. It pulled him right instead of left. Oops. But he'll be camping mid and stacking jungle for Fata. That's the plan. So who do you think's got the draft? Um, I like liquids just I, in general. I like liquids in general. It's yeah. just not the liquid draft. If this was like. Two team like just a normal salt. I mean, liquid, <laughs> very good team, but this is just not their normal type of draft. Mm -hmm. so I think they can play it like a liquid draft, where they're gonna fatter. Like he's gonna play super greedy, farm a lot. Matumba man will fight, create space. I'm, m I'm mostly worried about how mind control will do in the offline as an earth shaker. Silent actually gonna get scouted here from the high ground. We'll see how he does. Should be able to get, of course, some XP. He's got the three clarity and a mango build with Ring of Protection. Yep. 
Pot Ticket's bottom rune. This time he went for the Wraith Band and he already grabbed up the Necromastery. So we're ah. definitely going to be seeing this Winter Wyvern just sitting on him this this yep. time in the lane. Oh, who's going to need it? We'll see AA in the mid lane as well, which could mean chilling touch for Queen of Pain at level 1. And who's going to win the block here? This is something that's quite important here. If you get a bad block on the Radiant side, Vata could just get beaten down hard here. And it looks like it will be pretty even between the two teams. Slightly actually dire say it, my favorite. And there we go. Chilling touch from level one, two cells delivered, and see how this lane unravels. Importantly, Jerex only gets the the uh, Arctic burn onto No Fear, not onto General's Queen of Pain. Lane ward for Empire. Yeah, this is this is looking like a rough lane for SF. He does get one last hit under the tower, so there we go. Kuroki also opted for a null level one. And I guess you know Urshik is going to have a better time in the offlane because the AA, who's the zoning support, is in mid, whereas Sanking, yeah, he's got boots, but he can't really pose a huge threat to the Urshaker, who's got five armor, and against the Sanking Sven should be okay unless AA rocks up. Yeah, he, he should be just fine. Tados check on Fata. Similarly for... Liquid, they're going to look to zone out resolutions properly in the offlane. He's struggling to get anything in the way of levels right now. First blood, though. Whoa, oh, top lane. That was the AA. We talked about him rocking up, and they'll get a kill off of it. Well, one of the five games, I guess. I say that, like, we'll get five games. But Empire, they strike first. They get five, They get first blood, and it will be a bad start for the Earthshaker, who just pushed a bit too far up in the lane. I saw AA rotating up there, I was about to say something to you, and then I was like, Oh look, a Treant is blocking the bottom camp. <laughs> and then I missed the kill. Well, it's gonna continue to block that, that pull camp. Yep, it's... he's doing a good job of it this game. Yeah, something you commented he didn't... wasn't as proactive with last time. Jerex now, continue to stack in this mid lane. Two minute runes come out, it looks like Shaco not gonna be able to get this bounty rune, but we'll scout out that it was there and... Bata has some terrible uphill miss dancing. Oh, he's... Just missed, he just missed the two CS because of uphill misses. We saw it on the Viper as well. Top lane, it will be mind control still going to battle it out a bit with the AA after a fissure block. Curious haste rune, looking to scout out the stacks and then swoop around. We'll just kind of what's going on there and get a bit of harass and protection towards Fata. It is so far a very Queen of Pain favored CS in this mid lane 1v1. He's gonna have a nice stack. Looks like Jarex has not landed the uh, medium camp stacks at all though. Top lane, they're going for yep. it. They're nope. Close to the tower, I guess. They did use the war cry and everything for the extra bit of movement speed. Yeah, diving under the tower is just risky when the when the fissure's still up, you can get trapped in some weird way. Mid lane raises. Jeez. Has the bot also. That is actually you need to be careful. There's a blink scream in a couple of seconds here. General. Be careful. Just died for a second there. Sorry about that. You good? That's right. <laughs> There's the uh, mute button if you yeah. need to. I, I didn't actually explain how. Didn't reach it in time. It's <laughs> <laughs> one of those things I'm just like, I, I don't think I like, oh yeah, I need a, I've got a new caster in the studio. i got to tell them how things work. Yep. Nope. Alright, it's You've my bad. You've been here before. You were here for was yeah. the NA hub? Yeah, that was my did? bad. I knew it was there. Fata picks up a level of presence of the Dark Lord. What? That's good. That's Right? 100% misclick. I, I'm just... I know, I'm not. I just keep distracting you too. Every time. We make a terrible duo here. Yeah, we do. I just distract you and then you no. miss up. <laughs> it's gotta be a, a misclick from. I mean, that's, that's something that like you don't see though. You never see that happen. Is there any chance that's on a misclick? Maybe. Gotta get some, some tours, some T tours in the chat. <laughs> oh. Times 10. It's not even. It's like you do it once, like, yeah, I was already like, oh fuck, I missed the first blood. Now it's like, oh jeez, I missed two kills in a row, both of which was 100% like... 100% kills. It's not even like there was something else going on somewhere else in the map. It was just like, oh, I'm curious about some random little detail. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's tree in here blocking. Oh, there's an SF, you got a yep. point of aura. <laughs> right. This is, this is why I stopped. This is why I stopped being a main caster. This is also why I'm not invited to Frankfurt. Can't even catch kills. <laughs> well, I should be. They got three observers there. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be good. This is what you guys gonna prepare for for the group stage casting. We don't have dedicated ops. <laughs> That's gonna be rough. Bartha comes in, farms up the jungle stacks, and with Jerex tanking it up a little bit. So looking to farm this nice and early. 
Both both offlaners getting good XP. Resolutions close to level five. My control a little bit uh, lacking. Close yeah. to four though. And both safe lane and lane is free farming away. Thirty five CS apiece, so very much even between those two. But it is yeah, SF now after that stack, who's gonna yes, take over the CS lead over the Queen of Pain and have a net worth lead as well. So the stacks working wonders. That Radiant SF having a much better time than what we saw last game from General on his SF. Tumba Man, I believe, going to pick up the yeah, face boots. TP, he's ready to fight. Has Omni Slash as well. So, I'm going to put all my creative juices into not missing the next kill this game. I'm... Um. Keep my eyes open. Yeah, I'm just Keep like I'm open. not spending more than like two seconds in a given lane. Like okay, let's click another lane. Okay, there's that. I apologize for the motion sickness, guys, but I'm not missing another kill. <laughs> Aloha My juggling. And silence is not opting for that cleave. We've done it. Oh, 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 hey, let me keep my hands on the camera. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I took my hands off the mouse like to celebrate there, and I was like, Phew. all right, we're on the board. Yes, one, two to two. Two points, I guess. Yeah, Silent opted for, uh, he's maxing sp stun and no points in cleave right now. Two points in Warcry. Slightly, yeah, different build to what you normally see My from control. the spell. Oh, needs to get the stun, will not do so for the cold feet latch on, but they TP in the nature's profit on respawn with the tree and block. They should be able to get this kill. It's gonna turn in Fissure, but he goes down to the nature's profit. He got very low for that one. Still just an off a kill, they commit a lot of heroes for that, and again, it's Liquid playing the farm game, playing the efficiency war. Team Empire. SSF is farming his second big stack of the game, already up to level 8 now, on Fata. Yep. It doesn't really feel like mind control, despite being 0-2 right now, it's not like he's getting nothing out of this lane. Has Trenkle Boots, level 4, about to hit level 5. I'm sure those deaths aren't bad at all. He's getting, yeah, like you're saying, quite a lot. I mean, similarly for the Prophet. Two deaths, has now the one kill. He has level five, so it feels like both offlaners there. The two deaths, somewhat... somewhat acceptable. It's been very much even here in the early game as far as what the carries are getting, what the offlaners are getting. The mids, though, is probably where we see a slight different difference with SF getting a lot more because of all the jungle stacks. Yeah. But the trade-off is a Sand King who's jungling, so it's instead of farm going to Quap, it's farm going to Sand King. And he's, uh, he's gonna have a timely blink dagger. I would say around oh, like yeah. nine, ten minutes. He's almost there. That's actually give me a scary thought for Fata, whose mech will not come up before that Sand King blink. Aloha is spotted. Dyer's bottom They're making the move. We see our shaker running over. Yep. Is your into a splinter blast? They're gonna get it off the creep here, and there we go. Aloha, Bar strike, not gonna keep him alive. And they take the wild. Gun. Yep. Now mind control. Kind of play. You are in trouble. Yep. No way out for the Earthshaker. General wants to hold onto the Sonic Wave. We'll get to do so. Oh. Um, what? Oh, looking for the courier. He really wanted that courier. Does hit Fata as well, and General will not get the kill there. Aggressive play. They even had a profit ultimate. I believe may have been available. He just hit level six, but we before that now elsewhere. Jerax hiding in the trees. We'll get the TP out. Illusion. Silent, unsuccessful in that kill attempt. Nice. You got all the kills. No kills missed there. Phew. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Some nice wards coming out by Liquid. One behind the top tower. One in the enemy jungle. And I'm pretty sure that Sentry ward. Blocks. It might be a little bit left. I know that tree is one of the markers of blocking the new, uh, blocking that big camp. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll find out soon enough. In the meantime, it's not miscalling. <laughs> that's, that. that's one of those things I'll look at and be like, okay. Off Fata, channel requiem mid. General eats it and doesn't really care. Is that an invis? No, just no. uh. All right. Yep, and that does block here. that big camp. Okay, I was right. You know, I know something about warding at least. The Matumba man, he's taking out this bottom tier one tower now, and there's a decent amount of farm from Juggernaut actually oh, leading the way. Oh, he got low. Almost gets caught out. He got fissured with a double raise. Almost got killed. One more right click. Presence of the Dark Lord almost got him killed. Almost <laughs> <let him> go. <laughs> That's surely all part of the plan here. Kuro rotating in almost gets him from behind as well. Takes a lot of damage in the process. Gets pulled to Tango and will back off to safety. Yeah, he's been worried. Yeah. Well, no mana for it. Now he's got it. 
looking for a TP Prophet Ultimate onto Kuro. There we go. It's gonna bounce around it. Get oh, the Kuro on 40, 40 HP. Insta TP. Not gonna even wait around. As Liquid now gonna get. And Liquid is just so good at taking T1 towers early on in the game. They're very good at grouping up. Thinking Blink Dagger finished up, and it looks like now Sven is ready to jungle a bit and give his Ancient Apparition yeah. some levels. A is almost 6 too. Sankey wants to probably leech his level 7 so he gets his point in Epicenter, but not quite there yet. Time for a little smoke. There we go. Yeah, he's got a smoke with the Blink Dagger on the Courier. And I believe he's just going to take that off from... Who's the ideal target for this? Do you want the SF? Do you want the Jug? Really care who you get? Do you want a big team fight? Uh... It, I mean, it depends on whoever you're focusing in the fight. Fata oh, playing Fata. very red. Oh, man. Ooh, Blink Barrow Strike, he hasn't got the... Well, does have the Epicenter now. He only got the mana for... Or the uh, the skill point right after he got the Barrow Strike off. And General rocks up. Sonic Wave kill. Silent TPing in as well on the Sven, but this does expose the top lane. No fear on AA. Oh, he's he has level. no TP. He has nowhere to go. He's gone aggressive. Let's take down Jarex with me, if possible. That's not what I was looking for. Laguna Blade. Bring him down. And a cancel TP from General. Okay. And now they'll probably just hit the tower a little bit, but not not with too much aggression. They don't have any of their cores there. So an SF kill, very interesting, like looking at the net worth. It's the two liquid cores leading the way, but then it's four heroes on the Empire side. They're splitting the net worth very much more equally between their cores as well as the jungling Sand King. And going for more early game play now with Silent going for a Drum of Endurance. Coming Bottom in from behind lane. into the Jog. Yep, Resolution goes down to start things off. Now the additional TP's come out. That one cancelled by the Winter Wyvern. Chase is on for Silent, but I don't see Matumba Man catching up. And Well, that's going to be a TP or rotation in from Aloha Dance who gets down the aggressive ward. Matumba Man still chasing. Down on top, this T1 top tower. We're going to get down to uh, well, the Nye range and takes out, taken out by Kuro. Man, those two, the Earthshaker and the Lina just took out that tower by themselves, basically, up there. The Winter Weapon just kind of hanging around on the side, but very good pickup for them. Jarex narrowly avoids getting caught out there. Oh, I say that too soon. Jarex now caught out by a Barra Strike, another Blink Scream available. There we go. He gets brought down. Lina's still in the neighborhood, but I doubt Empire Looks like will realize he's there. Fata's going Lothar SF as well. Ooh. That's a... Fata not going mech. What a world we live in. Yeah, that is very On a mech ordinary. hero. I don't even like On a mech hero and Juggernaut, Healing Ward, and everything, like, just to synergize with it, but either yeah. way. Our against AA, but even so, like, still often CSF get mech and not be deterred by this factor. Yeah, it's gonna force the Sanking to buy some Doster sentries. Well, seeing more and more of this build. Okay, we got a smoke Shadow coming Fiends. out. Looks like they are aware of the Sanking farm in that camp. They've got the ward down. They see the neutrals running around. Hmm. And likely Sanking will want to go be greedy and go for this second big camp. Yep, he blinks on over. They look to make this play. Except has already used Shadow Blade. He's actually headed towards top where Empire. Oh, they're pinging, they're pinging the AA, but there's an invis quap there. They'll lose no fear here. Quap should just stay invis and will do so. Bata might be able to get bursted here. Yeah, he's, he's tread swapping, he's tread swapping, he's gonna get bursted. Oh man. Problem. That was a solo kill for the Quap now. It's level 11, gets hit by a leader stun, fishes to follow, Laguna Blade is there with the Winter's Ghost, low ground Echo Slam to help secure it. Okay, they get the Queen of Pain in exchange, use all their ultimates, Lina, why have an Earthshake of it? Quap kill, you'll take it. Definitely worth it. <laughs> that was well played there by General though, sitting on Fata, Fata didn't... I guess he didn't really realize he had the AA Blast on him still, and he tried swapped and lost himself like yeah. almost 200 life. Empire looking to punish this Matumba Man split push. Sanking. AA Blast coming down. Blink Fire Strike, Ice Flash should hit with this- Oh! Half a second too late on the Storm Bolt. Matumba Man will get the Blade Fury TP out. Ooh, they just ever so slightly mistimed that one. That's... Do they see Fata? He's gone in Invis here. It looks like he managed to Shadow Blade past Aloha Dance, who will run into a creep. Blaine, though. General. Uh oh. Fissure lead things off. Lena LSA. No Laguna Blade. They're still looking to go for this one. They've used the Echo Slam and everything, and. Not really all that close. If they'd kept either Echo or Laguna, they would have been able to get that kill. Still being annoying. Yeah.
constantly just showing up there. He's like, what the hell? These like support heroes are just pressuring me non-stop right now. Mm -hmm. Kuroki's on his way toward his Yules as well. Fisher comes out to stop no fear chasing and oh yep, looks like Aloha. Be careful, Fata with a Shadow Blade raise. Oh, not even gonna need the raise. That SK. Just paper. Fata's Shadow Fiend and Nice little kill that Fata picks up. Right now, as things stand, is a 2,000 net worth lead for Team Liquid, and slightly more than that as far as XP goes. Tumbo's on the prowl. He's gonna get a kill up on No Fear. Yep. Never. Omni Slash. Aggressive wards paying off. Man, there's been a lot of dire sentries in this jungle, and they just haven't been able to find the vision that Liquid have put up. Very much causing them problems here with Sanking getting pressured when he was jungling, and now we see the AA just at a tier 2 tower getting taken out. Silent's got a blink though, so this is maybe a key item they've been waiting for. As mid lane SF will catch the end of that one, gets the kill with a Shadow Blade onto the Quab. Oh dear. Top lane, meanwhile, Prophet Ultimate will clean up the Lina as they will go chasing here. Sprout catches up mind control on the retreat. A bit more mana now. We'll look for the totem, won't find it. This blink from the Sven. Like it catches out Liquid by surprise. Will lead to a couple of kills at top, but losing the Queen of Pain still not something Empire will be too pleased about. It's like, Fada's gonna go for S and Y here, or is he gonna go for the upgraded, ah. upgraded Shadow Blade to Silver Edge? And what can, you can get rid of the Sven Cleave. Outside of that, not a whole lot. See rotations in Fata. That's got a Requiem here, but silent. As a blink available, we'll just do some casual harass and then back off to continue farming. Feels like Liquid, much more so this game, happy to not group up as much and just prioritize their own farming efficiency with Matumba Man. He's been fighting less and just jungling the Ancients. They sent Kuro Bottom to get some more items. I feel Liquid are just very confident that their lineup is going to scale better and is more item dependent than Empire's, perhaps. Yeah, Kuro's just kind of been doing, he's doing his own thing for the most part in this game and it's paying off for him. And Kuru is quite, quite big here. Having a fast phase Yules could be a nice setup and catch for heroes like the Nature's Prophet. Same for the Queen of Pain, who won't have any kind of defensive items to get out of the Yules combo anytime soon. They ping out the SF here. It seems they know where he is. They're actually going to smoke up, trying to set up a dust Radiant's off of this, probably. Will they be able to find Fata? They're going to run down river. The blink virus wreck is here. I believe they caught vision of the crew. They're going to epicenter and everything. Fata's got a sand, but he's not going to be tanky enough to survive this one. Winter's Curse comes too late. It's onto the Sven. Not the ideal target. Use that on the Sand King, and then you've got a Sven just chopping down your Sand King, and it looks like neither of these two are going to go down just now. Another blink out. As Sven actually blinks to some additional farm. Maximizing that efficiency. They kill SF, they get out. Yep, that was good. And great awareness there by Aloha. Just was like, you know, I'm gonna pop the smoke, so if it gets revealed, I'm just gonna pop the dust, and pop is for sure dead. Bishop from mind control at bottom, looking to walk on in, but he doesn't actually have mana. The Echo Slam, we'll see a scream come out. It's gonna be the target is Kuro, and Airstrike just kind of waddled around and couldn't really hit anything with the mobility of the Queen of Pain. He's now in some trouble, looking for the Grant block. Won't Base hit it right run. away. Oh no, General! a bit short. There's still a Sprout though. And they get this kill. Not without a Triumph block, which he's not going to find. Resolution. Probably just going to back off here and accept that Lena kill. That's a couple of kills, a tower, and a lot of farm for Silent, who gets the kill on the SF. We'll back off to the jungle. He's farming on low HP, but being very efficient right now. We will see the Orchid now complete for the Prophet. Jug picks up a Battle Fury, so... All four games so far, though, I've been really, really enjoying the way Liquid wards. Somehow they always get all these deep wards in the enemy territory. Yeah. Making it very difficult for Empire to find find kills right now. Orchid finished up on Furion. Ag's finished up on Quap. And I don't think we'll be seeing an Aghanims coming out for this AA anytime soon. He's, he's dirt he is, poor. Yeah, he's the hard five this game. And again, gonna miss the sentry. Does mean having the sentry by the observer ward can scout out the SF Shadow Blade initiations, but having to, well, to kind of pair up these two together. It means the Queen of Pain can somewhat farm solo up here, but slightly less afraid of an SF Shadow Blade Requiem. Yeah, he goes for the Silver Edge. Okay. Saving himself. He didn't really have item slots. He didn't, I don't think he wanted to sell his stick or his bottle just yet. Pick up that stage. Silver Edge. 
Empire pretty good smoke. I'm not sure if they, where they smoked from. There was a ward pretty far back, but these two hero smokes likely to run into a lot of liquid heroes. They're ready for this one. The blink bar strike is there, Matumba Man. Oh, he gets the fissure off! Silent! Actually blinked into this Echo Slam. Laguna, they bring down Sven. Next in line is Aloha Dance, who's got to burrow in a couple of seconds. We'll look to make his move to the south, and he will be brought down. Beautiful fissure. If they get the Stormbot on Matumba, that's a dead. he's a dead man, but... No Shaker was there, ready. Liquid was all set up there as well. Everybody but the Shadow Fiend was there. I don't think they were necessarily expecting that. It just felt like they were just there, chilling, farming. And they saw like two or three Empire heroes on the map, and it felt like a smart smoke gank to go for for Empire because they did have a lot of heroes missing. Been able to to punish. Tumba's got his Battle Fury now. Battle Fury Yasha. Farm is going to accelerate quite rapidly. Very much a game that feels like we're going to the late game. Is is there either team who you feel has the the advantage there? With how things are kind of developing right now. I like Liquid's team fight just because they have the big the big curse and the big echo. They can really lock anybody down and burst them with Laguna and everything. Although Empire does have like Epicenter and Sven when he gets once he gets this BKB, it's just it just doesn't seem like they're. It just every time it's like one second, they just have something to pair against it. Like this Earthshaker Fissure has just deterred it multiple times so yeah. far, it seems. And even like we haven't even really seen the Winter's Curse and what it can bring to the table as like a counter lane, is silent, getting yuled up, and he's gonna die for sure. Play here and everything, just to make sure there was no counter plays. Desperately in need of a BKB on Sven, and even when you've got it, there's. Kuro's getting there. farmed. He's got his phase yeah. boots, he's got Yules, he's got 1300. He's, he can pick up the point booster and make be on his way toward his eggs if he wants to. He's more of a core than mind control at this point. He only now picks up blink, but very much. Oh, bottom lane. There's the shadow blade. That's a kill on the prophet. Well, the silver edge now. Vata, one and one, and well, it's Empire possibly in a bit of a dangerous position here. There's a lot of liquid heroes nearby. That fissure will not land. I think it's going to be signal for Empire to get the hell out of here. Been spotted. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Get out while you can. Not general though. He's gonna go for the courier. He holds it. Doesn't even want to click. Doesn't want to hit it at all. Just just holds it. That was the shadow amulet and manta recipe from a tumba man. So the glimmer cape. The jug manta. And Jared, he's doing great as well. He's if he has a glimmer cape already. Soul ring boots. Got everything he really needs on that hero. Oh, general. He's maybe gone into DP. The chain stun coming out. Lena slightly out. Oh, just in range. Dragon slave is there. They'll get the kill with the last Lena right click. <laughs> Looked a bit greedy, very much clear intent just to be creep skipping there and causing Liquid problems, but Liquid reacted in time. And they punished. Greedy play coming out from General. Bata looking to wind up again, he goes in with the Silver Edge. A lot of armor coming out thanks to the Warcry, and even with the double damage rune, he won't be able to bring down Sven. Liquid looking to looking like benefiting more from this game as it's continuing forward. Yeah, I mean, this last five minutes or so has just gone incredibly well for them, and they're up two games to one. This is this is it for Empire as far as the winner bracket final goes. If they can't turn this game around, not really able to use this uh, epicenter too efficiently. I and mean, they invested a lot in the Sand King, playing kind of greedy in the jungle. He's one and three right now. I kind of feel like this is also where Liquid adapted really quickly in this game. They were recognized. Usually they group up and they push more towers, but this game they identify, you know, oh, we're against the Sand King, we're against an AA, we're against the Furion. Setting up grouped up on towers is very dangerous. Kuroki gets caught by the slam. Yeah. Fissure will come in, but this is not going to lead to too much. And Echo Slam Song cooldown as well. They are going to lead in with Fatu, who's winding up a Requiem. We'll catch a lot of these series. Blink in, Totem available. That'll can't. Oh, no, we won't actually get casted as Sand King, Burrow, Blink out, and they'll TP out the Prophet as well. Empire disengaged for now, but they're going to re engage here. Silent goes in with the Godspring, gets fissured up. Omni Slash as well. Winter's Curse. Silent goes down. Without a BKB, he just gets destroyed. Aloha then back in with a level 2 epicenter. Fata dead. That's an SF kill. Tumberman could be next if they've got the damage. Bop has no ultimate, but will have a Scream Shadow Strike. He blinks forward, goes for Jerex instead. One more right click will be enough. Now it's just Jerex versus the world as Earthshaker gets taken out by the Pro. Orchid available. Goes for. Oh, there we go. Calling Blade through the sprout. Just Jug versus Quop. Do these two even face off against one another? We'll have to wait and see. Jerex will have another Blade Fury. Oh, Jerex and the Tumberman, as I get corrected. 
I was getting so confused. I'm like, Jarex. I'm like, I'm like, for some reason, I thought Jarex was playing Jug. I don't I'm know. I swear he's on. dead. I swear yeah, yeah, yeah. he's dead. But no, Matumba just benefited. Yeah, that fight, that fight was incredibly big for him. Silent got ambitious. He wanted to go in, but he just gets bursted. Oh no, General. Oh no, if you get soloed here by Lena. Okay. Man, that was close. One right click short. And that last one left him about 20 HP. He's thinking about He's so cocky. Look at this. He wants to go for the kill of Kuro. <laughs> He's gonna do. Oh, <laughs> that's just. <laughs> Serves you right, man. So cocky. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, the one earlier where he was creep skipping, I, I'm okay with that death. That one there, the night. I'm gonna defend him for that one. Kuroki knew as well. He's like, this guy's so greedy. Just TP. He's gonna try to go on me again. And it happens. Matumba now picks up a Blink and a Manta for that top fight. Yeah, you know, that, that reminds me of a play like someone like Kyo would make for the old MVP, where it's just like, just kind of forgetting the fact he has a team, trying to make some crazy individual play, and more often than not, it, it, it does backfire. Yeah, he's getting he's getting very underfarmed off of these deaths, not having the game that he had earlier on the Queen of Pain. Oh, Jarek's swimming up, but he won't get the vision inside the Sprout. To engage. Silent about to have his BKB finished up. And look, and Kuroki opted for a blink rather than going for the um, Aghanim's rush. So positioning more favorable. Yep. BKB finished SF. And get, you've got such great setup, like very much like if Ursh, you can catch him before he BKBs with an Earthshaker, with a blink go. You can catch him before a BKB with a Winter's Curse. So having the follow up blink LSA. Oh, Kuro's in. Yep. Gone for the Sand King. We'll hit the LSA, although the virus Strike also went off. Now the Fissure follow-up Matumba Man goes... Whoa, that was a... aggressive Omni Slash, which will be instantly cancelled, but they get the kill anyways on Sand King. Not too big a deal. Yeah, Liquid's 5-man looking strong enough to now pressure and take out a T2 tower. Possibly even fall back and go for Roshan if they want to. Yeah, and Jerex pick Jam. And to secure the map a bit until they're comfortable to go high ground. Yeah, maybe they are already with the Sanking Dead. Just poke it for 20 seconds or so. Yep, and they're gonna force this one. Even without an Aegis, they've got BKB on SF. Juggle Blink forward in the trees, catches out Silent. Silent, who's looking for that Blink BKB initiation. Fata, some BKB this one. He wants to hold on for as long as possible. Kuro blinks forward, they've hit the stuns on the General. He goes down, has buyback, and may have to use it. And they want to hold against the Liquid Bush here. They're gonna need to pull something out. Fata still with BKB, they've held on so well to their items. They've got Radiant Manta style and Jug still available, he's ready for a blink initiation himself, and... Multiple blinks on this side here, as they are going to look to go on No Fear, he gets brought in. There's going to be the epicenter coming out, they want Fata, he's now BKB's up. Silent in the front lines, he's getting kited around. Lina, just too much mobility here. Now he's going to come back, look for mind control as well as Fata. Fata low, gets the silver drop, turns around and brings down Silent. Crops buyback, needs to find some kills here. Blink, Echo on two, LSA to fall on two as well. Kuro with the perfect follow-up to mind control, perfect initiation. They team wipe Empire and it looks like Liquid have broken through the Empire defense and will take a lane of Rax. They won't get mid lane with a tier 2 standing, but this puts Liquid possibly into the Summit 4 land finals. They just, they're, they're showing that they're the better team right now. They're showing more teamwork overall. Just a good awareness, great jumping away. They're like initiating on teams. You can see they have the coordination. Mind Control jumps and Kuroki blinked at the, the exact same time to try to go for the LSA. Oh, some great synergy coming out on this. Yeah, game. I mean, Kuro and Mind Control this game have just been on the same page. Even before the Blink Daggers, it was just constantly getting their chain stuns off. Well, they were they were the ones killing. The, the, these are the two players responsible for Queen of Pain's poor game. This Qu Queen of Pain five and six this time around, and it's been very much Lena and Shaker who've been the reason why. Two lanes of racks. It's not mid lane they go for. It's top lane, and that puts Empire in a very desperate position. Twenty five thousand net worth lead. Lina gets a take on of all items. I think Kuro's trying to celebrate, perhaps, here. Yeah, two Raxes versus yeah. that lineup. You're feeling pretty good he about it. He had nags against the BKB, but he's like, no. Stay gone. I didn't notice either. I just saw people in chat pointing out. Matumba Man had one, level 1 crit until, like, level 18. Or level okay. 19. He's opted for stats, I guess, instead. And there's a lot of burst damage and chain stun that could catch him, I guess. So he just wants raw HP. Yeah. You look at... The catch from a blink barrow strike, the storm bolt to follow up, and the orchid as well, which may prevent him using or well, getting anything done. It just doesn't seem like Empire really could 
fight. They got their blinks, they got like some item timings, but it just... The items didn't really do much. Like Sanking, I think, got like one one or two decent kills with the blink dagger, which were good, but I haven't seen the orchid really come into play. I felt like just missing, like even just not having like a mech on their team, not having a glimmer cape against the huge yeah. magic burst damage, they're very much just missing some of these key utility items. Something which your, a team can often struggle from when you run like a nature's prophet, because it's often like an off laner who gets these kind of items. Radiant yeah. Courier. Oh, free courier for Silent, okay. 5,000 gold on it too. I think that was a full MKB. Uh, Scotty from a tunnel. Oh, Scotty, sorry. Yeah, he was looking to. I guess he was flying it to the side shop to complete it in the side shop. Yeah, because I was like, what? Scotty doesn't cost that exactly yeah. the same as MKV? What's happening? No. It was he sending have... it past his hero. Yeah. To... And he didn't have the Unfortunately, move. they'll get Roshan, but won't have the Scotty. I don't think that's necessarily going to deter them from going for a push here, but it's going to be Empire. We want to go in for a fight. Roche down below half HP. Empire, I think, realizing that if they give up a Roshan here. This could be game from the side. Queen of Pain blinks in, looking for Lena. Defensive Yules is there. General will time the Swift nicely. Virus Strike as well, but there's the Winter's Curse. General getting very low totem ready. Fissure as well. They get the kill. Meanwhile, the Roshan fits silent. Snatches the Aegis. He's still fighting, but he's going to get very low, and he's going to be respawning without BKB, without God Strength. Sparta unwinds, lets out a Wrecker, and brings down the Prophet in the Sprout. Silence got one. Lost her but he misses the blink out. Here comes the FP Center, but it's going to be probably to no avail. I say that he gets some low, but where's the killing blow they need? That's Sven BKB. They need that God Strength. The Ice Blast comes in too late. Empire GG out. <laughs> Resolution bought back and TP'd right in the middle of the pit and just died instantly as well. Uh... No, they, they gave it their all though. You can tell Empire were trying to fight to the end. It just seemed like a little bit of miscoordination and just some really well played, really well played team fights by Liquid. Being where they needed to be several times, Empire get like jump with the Sanking. They committed to these kills, trying to get the uh, Juggernaut half a second off. Juggernaut yeah. lives twice. They get net kills out of it as well, and just yeah, ends up. This momentum rolls in Liquid's favor and 